message. All right, we have time for two more. Uh, the first will be from Jesse Doherty, Washington Post. Hey, Sean, it's maybe like a bit in the weeds, but at the during negotiations, uh, owners had kind of restarted things uh, when they suggested that, that they agreed to the original deal under the pretense there would be no fans. We've now seen in recent days uh, owners starting to say that they could see fans in parks in 2020. They 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 are hoping to have them. Uh, as someone who's was part of those you know, negotiations, uh, how does that sit with you? That something that maybe seemed to be a linchpin in the middle is now being brought back up and maybe reframed. Can you tell I'm smiling? On, can you tell I'm smiling under my mask? I I can't, I can't but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put that on the record that you smiled. Uh, I, you know what? Um, um, I'm going to dance around that question a little bit. Okay. Um, just because there's still a lot of moving pieces behind the scenes. But um, I don't think any of us were necessarily surprised by that. Um, but I do think it brings to – it does, like, bring to mind kind of where we're at um, in our response to this as a country. Like, we're trying to bring baseball back in a, in a, during a pandemic – that's killed 130,000 people. We're way worse off in a, as a country than where we were in March when we shut this thing down. And like, look at where other developed countries are in their response to this. We haven't done any of the things that other countries have done to bring sports back. Sports are like the reward of a functioning society, uh, a, a functional society. And we're just like trying to just bring it back, even though we've taken none of the steps to have it to to flatten the curve or whatever you want to say to like we did flatten the curve for a little bit but we didn't use that time to do anything productive we just opened back up for memorial day we decided we're done with it like if there aren't sports it's going to be because people are not wearing masks because the response to this has been so politicized like we need help from the people from the general public if they want to watch baseball like please wear a mask like social distance keep washing your hands like we can't just have virus fatigue and think it's been like well it's been four months like we're over it this has been enough time right we've waited long enough like shouldn't sports come back now no there's things we have to do in order to bring the stuff back so like and now you want to bring fans back i mean i don't know is that safe i'm not a public health expert but like we should probably re defer to them on some of these issues. Um, so I, I don't know. I like, I don't know if it's safe or not. I really don't know, but like, that doesn't seem like something that, um, I don't know if that feels like a good idea or not. I really, I don't know. All right. Our final question will be from Todd Dibus, NBC sports, Washington. And Sean, uh, like Jesse just alluded to, I kind of want to ask you about negotiations and your view of, the three months after the original agreement, which ended up being what you guys are doing in the end anyway. And there's all this public back and forth um, <laughs> it, it, in the middle of a pandemic and the social unrest that you mentioned. And meanwhile, baseball was just arguing within itself the entire time. Uh, kind of what was your feeling while that was going on? And ultimately, what was your feeling on what was landed on at the end? It was awful. It was awful. I hated it. Um, Unfortunately, we had to, we were put in a position where we had to hold ground and, and not get taken advantage of. But the fact that the conversation, it felt like the conversation shifted from being about, okay, what's it going to take for, for us to do this from a health and safety standpoint? The conversation should have been, that should have been the focus all along. Um, how are we going to keep these people safe and not just the players, the, the staff and, and all the um, auxiliary workers that it takes to put a baseball season on. And that should have been the focus. Instead, the focus was trying to jam in a new salary structure in the middle of a pandemic and start and, and try to uh, change a bunch of the rules, um, stuff they've wanted to do all along in a, in like a two month window during a pandemic. So it's like, it was, it, it, the whole thing, it, it felt tone deaf, it, it felt uh, gross. Um, I'm, you know, I'm proud of our solidarity. I'm proud of the way players held the line and, and, and didn't give in. And in the end, 
we ended up with a deal that is um, like a situ we ended up with a situation that is pretty much what the March agreement was uh, was setting up the entire time. So like, it feels like we could have done this without spilling all this bad blood and airing all these public grievances. Um, but um, I'm, you know, I don't know. Um, again, I, I still think that because of the way the conversation shifted to be about the economics and the business aspect of this, that um, the health and safety protocols kind of took a back seat. And then, uh, you know, all of a sudden they were like, all right, July 1st, let's go. But like, I don't know how much they coordinated with our staff and they're kind of like, it's a little bit, it's a little bit disorganized. We're not getting tests back in time. Um, they still haven't sent us the PPE. We're supposed to have N95 masks, stuff like that, gowns, gloves. We're supposed to have that stuff. We don't have that stuff. So um, those are, and those are the things it's going to take for people to stay safe enough for us to continue the season. So um, I really wish the focus was more on the, the health and safety protocols and um, uh, maybe we could have avoided um, a lot of that mess.